Are you on TRT and worried about your PSA levels? Maybe you're concerned because you think you might get elevated PSA levels, or maybe you're already seeing that happen on your blood test results. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to address this specific question, how to keep PSA levels low while on TRT. We're going to look at the specific contributing factors on PSA coming from TRT, and we're also going to look at some things that may contribute to PSA that have nothing to do with TRT. Again, my name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I'm making these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, or diagnosis. I'm making these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on with your health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, breaking down lab tests, hormones, et cetera, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. Let's connect the dots on how to keep PSA levels low while on TRT. So in this video, we're gonna look at how to keep PSA low while you're on TRT. So for those of you that don't know, PSA stands for prostate specific antigen and TRT is testosterone replacement therapy. So one way to keep PSA low while on TRT or testosterone replacement therapy is to keep a closer eye on your PSA with regular blood tests. Now, of course, the testing itself is not going to help with keeping the PSA low, but the testing is going to help you catch it before it gets too high so you can take corrective action on whatever is causing that. So here we want to look at what some of those potential causes could be, both related to TRT and unrelated to TRT. So as I said, PSA stands for prostate-specific antigen, and it's a protein, a specific protein to the prostate. And levels usually signal an inflammation going on in the prostate or in that prostate tissue or it could also be from increased growth or expansion of those tissues. And there are many things that can cause increased growth and expansion of those tissues. Again, some related to TRT, some not related to TRT. So first, let's look at the ones that are related to TRT or testosterone replacement therapy. Estradiol and DHT, also known as dihydrotestosterone, are two hormones that come to mind regarding growth of prostate tissue. Remember, PSA is a protein or antigen that comes from the prostate, so more prostate tissue means more PSA. Both estradiol and DHT can raise the PSA because they both stimulate growth and enhance growth of prostate tissue. So part of keeping PSA in check while you're on TRT is to keep the estradiol and keep the DHT in check. However, this is a bit like using a paper towel to keep dry during a rainstorm. It may work at first, but eventually you're going to get wet depending on how much rain is coming down. This is to say that if you're on TRT or testosterone replacement therapy, you're going to make more DHT. You're going to make more estradiol. It's just part of the process of being on testosterone replacement therapy. Still, there are some things you can do to keep them relatively in check so that you're not getting super high PSA levels. How often are you injecting? Basically, we want to know how high is the peak of your testosterone, and that's going to determine the amount of estradiol and DHT that you're making. So if you take a big dose of testosterone once a week, you're going to get a real high spike in your testosterone, and this is contrasted with a small dose several times a week. When you take the big dose once a week, that estradiol and DHT are going to be much higher. And this is because those tissues, the prostate tissue really all over in your body is going to get saturated by the testosterone. And when that happens, the enzymes that naturally produce estradiol and DHT are going to be saturated with this testosterone, and they're naturally just going to start converting. So step one in how to keep PSA low while you're on TRT is to check these levels when you're at your peak testosterone level. So if you're doing an injection once a week, you want to check it three to five days after your injection, not seven days after your injection. If they are high, then you have the option to decrease the dose or break the dose up into two shots per week. Something like that would be reasonable. Now, 
You also have to consider the effectiveness of the treatment. Eventually, if you decrease the dose too much, you're really not getting anything out of it. Usually, though, small reductions in dose, people don't really notice a whole lot in terms of the effectiveness of the treatment. If your PSA has increased over time, it's going to take several weeks to even months to really notice that PSA start to respond to those lower estradiol and lower DHT levels. You can also try to control the estradiol and DHT with different medications and herbal supplements. I'll put a link to some of the ones that we use in the description in case you want to check those out. With all this being said, you still have to keep in mind that analogy of a napkin in the rainstorm. If there's only little trickles or sprinkles, that napkin's going to do just fine to keep your head and maybe body from getting wet. However, if it's downpouring, that napkin's really going to do nothing. So in this case, the napkin can be thought of as the herbs or slight adjustments in your peak testosterone levels. Step two in how to keep PSA levels low while on TRT is to look at things that generally raise PSA. Anything that's inflammatory to the body in general can increase inflammation in the prostate as well. So there are a few like lifestyle dietary things you can do that may help keep your PSA levels lower, keep them in check. These include maintaining a healthy weight, exercising regularly, following an anti-inflammatory diet, and in particular, a diet that is low in saturated fat and red meat. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to eat zero red meat. It means if you're eating it five days a week, maybe you go down to once a week. A relative reduction in that red meat may make a big difference in keeping your PSA levels in check. Ultimately, it's important to work closely with your doctor to monitor your PSA levels and determine the best course of action in managing them. So how did I do? Does that give you a better understanding of how to keep PSA levels in check while you're on TRT? If it does, great. Let me know in the comment section. And let me know too if there's something that perhaps I didn't address, something you want follow-up information on. I'll try and answer your questions in the comment section. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.